Welcome to part two of this short series I'm doing on creating characters. In part one, I talked about the fundamental elements of dramatic character by defining want and need and their use in a story. If you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend watching it first. Link is in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be examining the different character arcs and how they can be practically understood to help begin a story or fix problems while rewriting. A character arc is the internal change that a character makes from the beginning of a story to the end. K.M. Wyland writes, Character arcs are ultimately the whole point of fiction. The change, the journey from one spiritual, emotional, intellectual place to another, is the story of humanity. Character arcs are an integral element of why a story works and how plot is created. Conflict, tension, and story structure are all driven by how characters are created and how they change over the course of a story. In her book, Creating Character Arcs, Wyland lays out three arcs, the change arc, the flat arc, and the negative arc. And to this list, I'm going to add one more arc, the open-ended arc. First, let's take a look at the most prominent type of character arc, the change arc, also called the positive change arc. As I explained in part one, your character's need is a result of being internally incomplete because of their lie. This lie will become the main element in the internal change of the character as he or she encounters the truth. The change arc works like this. Character believes lie. Character encounters the truth. Character overcomes lie by finding and accepting the truth. Character believes lie. In Iron Man, Tony Stark begins the story with a lie. Tony doesn't believe that his actions have serious consequences. He doesn't believe that he needs to be responsible or accountable for how his weapons are used. Character encounters the truth, but Tony is captured. In captivity, Tony realizes that his company has been arming terrorists. Tony meets Jensen. Jensen is a character that already sees the truth that Tony must find. Jensen explains to Tony how his arrogance and lack of accountability have hurt thousands of people. What you just saw, that is your legacy, Stark. As Tony and Jensen begin to supposedly work on the Jericho missile, Jensen begins to show Tony how truly hollow his life is. So you're a man who has everything, and nothing. Jensen helps Tony build the first Iron Man suit, and as Tony escapes, Jensen is killed. And Jensen gives Tony one of the best pieces of advice he can. Don't waste it. Don't waste your life. Character overcomes lie by finding and accepting the truth. This experience changes Tony. He finds and accepts the truth, that his actions have serious consequences and that he is responsible for how his weapons are used. And I saw that I had become part of a system that is comfortable with zero accountability. Internally, Tony is now balanced and complete. Quick note, balanced and complete doesn't mean they are now a perfect person. It means they found the particular truth that needed to be found in this particular story. In Iron Man, this change happens quickly, within the first 40 minutes of the film. In some stories, it will not happen this quickly. Sometimes, a character will struggle to find and accept the truth until the very end of the story. But remember, the main point of the change arc is that a character goes from believing a lie to finding the truth that allows them to become balanced and whole. For the rest of the film, Tony tries to apply this newfound truth to himself and his company. As he does, he encounters darker secrets and larger opposition. When writing a positive change arc character, there's a few elements that are useful to keep in mind. First, establishing the lie the character believes is one of the most important elements. The audience will not be able to see how the character changes over time if they don't understand the lie the character believes. Another important element is the characters or events that put the change arc character's lie into question, reveal the truth, and help drive not only the internal conflict of the character, but the external plot as well. It can be useful to be aware of the exact lie the character believes and the exact truth they need to find when beginning a story. While some may think beginning this way is too restrictive or formulaic, it will give you a starting point of internal character conflict to allow the plot to grow more naturally out of the character's want and need within the story. Next, let's take a look at the flat arc. In a flat arc, the character has already found and accepted the truth. They have no need, no lie, and make no internal change. 
Wyland writes, the flat art character already has the truth figured out in the beginning of the story, and he uses that truth to help him overcome various external tests. The flat arc looks like this. Character believes the truth, character's belief in the truth is tested, character holds on to the truth. Remember when I talked about Juror 8 and 12 Angry Men and Paddington in his films? These are flat art characters. They remain the protagonists of their stories, but they are not the ones who change. They change the people around them. Juror 8 helps the other members of the jury see the value in the justice system and overcome their prejudice. And Paddington's optimism, joy, and consideration for others help the characters around him find joy and happiness, no matter where they are. In these situations, the protagonist is a mentor figure to the other characters in the story. But a character doesn't have to be the symbol of goodness just because they don't have a need. In Nightcrawler, Lou is a flat art character. While Juror 8 and Paddington help those around them find positive truths, Lou reveals a dark truth, that exploiting others can bring success. As Lou interacts with the other characters, he begins to exploit, manipulate, and even kill them to get what he wants. His belief in this negative truth allows him to win again and again and again. I like to say that if you're seeing me, you're having the worst day of your life. Let's take a look at how the flat arc is structured in a story. Character believes the truth. Paddington begins his story believing a truth. His truth is that politeness, optimism, and consideration of others makes the world a better place. Lou begins his story also believing a truth. His truth is that others can be exploited for personal gain. The beginning will also show what the other characters believe about this particular truth. In Paddington 2, most of the other characters in Windsor Gardens have accepted the truth and are enhanced by Paddington's presence. In Nightcrawler, most of the other characters are also aware of the truth that others can be exploited. However, they don't believe these horrible things can happen to them. The character's belief in the truth is tested. Paddington is imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit, a situation that would make many falter from an optimistic, happy perspective. The Browns struggle to find any evidence on the true thief, making it even less likely that Paddington will be set free. In Nightcrawler, Lou begins the story with his truth immediately challenged. While he believes that you can exploit others, he struggles to do it himself. We meet Lou as he steals scrap metal and tries to sell it. The scrapyard owner knows he's a thief and won't hire him. Even why not tonight? No. As Lou learns night crawling, he encounters other obstacles that stand in his way. But the character holds on to the truth. However, it doesn't take Paddington long to change the minds of those inside the prison, and soon, Paddington's ideas of optimism and consideration of others makes the prison a beautiful place. In Windsor Gardens, the neighborhood bands together to free Paddington. Paddington and his friends defeat Phoenix Buchanan, and happiness returns to the neighborhood. In Nightcrawler, Lou successfully builds his business. Those who have come in contact with him have been killed, manipulated, and exploited. Remember, stories are about change. If you are creating a character that will not change throughout a story, it's important to take a look at the other characters to see which ones may change. It's not that you have to know exactly who will change and how as you begin a story. However, if you move through the entire story with little dramatic character change, then it's much more difficult to keep an audience engaged with the story as a whole. The last type of arc that Wyland outlines is the negative change arc, and it's the most complicated of the three. Wyland writes, The negative change arc tells the story of a character who ends in a worse place than that in which he started. The negative change arc has three different types of arcs within it. The disillusionment arc, the fall arc, and the corruption arc. The disillusionment arc is exactly the same as a positive change arc. The character has a lie that must be overcome. The only difference is that when the character overcomes the lie and finds the truth, the truth is negative. Simply put, character believes a lie, overcomes that lie, but the new truth is tragic. Character believes a lie. In The Great Gatsby, Nick Carraway begins the story enthralled in the lifestyle of the super rich, like Gatsby. Nick's lie is that being rich and powerful creates true happiness. Character encounters the truth. As Nick gets closer to Gatsby, he arranges a meeting between Gatsby and his long-lost lover, Daisy. 
However, the closer Nick gets to Gatsby and the East Egg residents, the more he realizes that their hedonism is a facade that hides their shallow existences. For the second time that summer, I was guarding other people's secrets. Character overcomes lie by finding the truth, but the new truth is tragic. In the end, Gatsby is killed. Those who surrounded Gatsby while he was alive care nothing for him in his death. Nick accepts that the East and West Egg residents are shallow, disdainful, dramatic people with little regard for others. Nick has found the dark truth. They smashed up things and people and then retreated back into their money and their vast carelessness. Writing a disillusionment arc will work very similarly to the positive change arc. It can be helpful to nail down the exact lie the character believes and the dark truth they will come to understand. This will give you a launching point to begin your story, or a way to find story problems and solve them. In a fall arc, the character will have a fatal flaw or lie just like the positive change arc, but instead of finding the truth and accepting it, the character will fall further into the darkness of the lie, usually ending in self-inflicted destruction. Simply put, the character believes a lie, clings to the lie, rejects the truth, and finally believes a stronger or worse lie. Character Believes a Lie In X-Men First Class, Eric Lenscher, aka Magneto, is a great example of this arc. Eric's lie is that he believes anger gives him power. Sebastian Shaw unlocked Eric's power through anger and hate. Eric believes finding and killing Shaw will satisfy him. Character clings to the lie and rejects new truth. Eric meets Charles. Charles tries to convince Eric of the truth, that he must let go of his anger and desire for revenge if he wants to find peace. At the midpoint, Shaw kills Darwin. Eric wants to avenge Darwin by going after Shaw with the other mutants. Charles reluctantly agrees. Through Charles's help, Eric gets even stronger. It seems as though Charles is getting through to Eric. There's so much more to you than you know. Not just pain and anger character believes a stronger or worse lie. But it wasn't enough. Eric goes against Charles and kills Shaw. And this success introduces a stronger lie. Eric believes that Shaw was right, and that mutants must kill humanity to survive and bring in the future. At the end, we see that Eric's new lie is still rooted in his childhood trauma. But just following orders. I've been at the mercy of men just following orders. Never again. In a fall arc, the character will usually start in a dark place or already on a dark path. They are unaware of the truth and never embrace it. For this type of arc, the motivation for the lie and why the character does not embrace the truth is important. In X-Men First Class, while we may not agree with Eric's conclusions, his past suffering makes it totally understandable for why he cannot embrace the truth. In a corruption arc, a character will have the truth in the beginning of the story, or at least will be very aware of the truth. Then throughout the events of the story, the character will reject the truth they know for a lie. It will look like this. A character sees the truth, rejects the truth, and embraces a lie. Character sees the truth. In The Godfather, Michael Corleone is surrounded by the lie, but is aware of the truth. Michael is aware of who his family is and what kind of business they run. Michael knows his family is following a lie of power and control, and he believes he is not like them. That's my family, Kate. It's not me. Character rejects the truth. Don Corleone is shot. This causes Michael to get pulled into the mob at a time of crisis. At the midpoint, Michael shoots Solazzo, which changes him from being a civilian to an active member of this war. Michael is descending into the lie. After Michael shoots Solazzo, he is sent to Sicily to hide. This gives him an opportunity to embrace the truth and stay away from the mob. Character embraces a lie. But this doesn't happen. His new wife is killed, which sends Michael back to America. Michael becomes head of the family and kills the leaders of the other families, solidifying his family as the most powerful mob and embracing the lie. The major difference in a corruption arc and a fall arc is that in the beginning of a fall arc, the character isn't aware of the truth. But in a corruption arc, the character will be. In this story, the lie must be appealing because the character must have a good reason to leave the truth and embrace the lie.
In The Godfather, the lie is appealing for two main reasons. The first reason is that the lie is what helps keep Michael's family safe. The Corleone family cannot simply lay down arms and move into the normal world. They are too involved in organized crime and they have too many enemies. The second reason is that the mob represents power and control, something that Michael realizes he craves as the story goes forward. It's not simply about protecting his family. Deep down, he wants to be feared and respected. But character arcs can get more interesting than this, and I want to focus on an arc that Wyland doesn't talk about, the open-ended arc. In an open-ended arc, the character may have a need or they may not, depending on an audience's interpretation of the film. Let's take a look at Whiplash and examine Andrew's character arc. Andrew wants to become a great musician. Throughout the story, he pursues this want until he gets it in the end. So what is his need, and what is his lie? I think there are two main interpretations. First, you could say that Andrew has a fall arc. Remember, in a fall arc, the character believes the lie, clings to that lie, rejects the truth, and then believes a stronger or worse lie. Let's see if it works. Character believes a lie. Andrew starts the story by believing a lie, that achieving greatness will make him fulfilled. As Andrew gets closer to his goal, Fletcher pushes him harder and harder. Fletcher believes his method of teaching can push people to true greatness. Character clings to the lie and rejects new truth. When Fletcher cuts Andrew from the band, Andrew has an opportunity to re-examine his belief. Is greatness really worth it? A normal life can be very fulfilling. Why not embrace it instead? But Andrew talks with Fletcher again. Fletcher is given the chance to explain himself. I was there to push people beyond what's expected of. And once again, Andrew focuses on becoming great. Not only that, but he believes in Fletcher's method. Character believes a stronger or worse lie. At the end of the film, Fletcher embarrasses Andrew. Andrew walks towards his father, the representation of the normal life. But then Andrew chooses greatness. He chooses a worse lie. That greatness is what fulfills him, and that greatness is achieved through pushing people to the breaking point. So it seems to work, but let's take a look at it again from a different point of view. Let's look at the story as if Andrew has a flat arc. Character believes the truth. In the beginning of the story, Andrew believes greatness will fulfill him. This isn't necessarily a lie. This may actually be the truth. Not only that, but he already respects Fletcher's methods. And his opinion means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Andrew also looks down upon people who choose to be normal rather than great. Oh, that's what this is all about? You think you're better than us? Catch on quick, are you gonna model you then? The character's belief in the truth is tested. While others around him, like his father and Nicole, stand as representations of the normal life he could choose, he continues to follow Fletcher towards greatness. Even after Fletcher kicks Andrew out of the band, Andrew doesn't want to turn against him. Why? Because Andrew knows that Fletcher helps create great musicians. Andrew stops being a musician, but we see that he has lost his purpose. Greatness still sits on his mind. He sits in a moment of confusion. Is the truth that he knows actually true? Is greatness worth it? But the character holds on to the truth. When he meets back up with Fletcher, his truth is reinvigorated. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. And in the end, he chooses to be great rather than to be normal. Fletcher's methods were right. You can build greatness through torment. This was the intention of writer and director Damien Chazelle. He wanted the audience to ask themselves these specific questions. Is greatness worth it? And is torment and struggle the best way to produce greatness? The interpretation depends on whether an individual thinks Andrew believes a lie or has found the truth. Do films like Whiplash put into question the previous understanding of character arcs? No, I don't think so. Interpreting the story through different character arcs is intentional and not simply academic theory. I'm not suggesting that Chazelle wrote the story by being totally aware of the fall arc and the flat arc, but he did write to intentionally explore an idea that he was struggling with. And this struggle created the different interpretations of Andrew's arc. These arcs are not the ultimate rules for how you should create characters, but they are frameworks that can set you on the right track to create emotionally resonant characters and stories. 
When beginning a story or trying to fix problems, ask yourself what journey this particular character is taking. It doesn't mean you have to outline your entire story and not allow any creative freedom. It simply means you are writing with a focus. I'm not trying to give you an understanding of how every character arc works, but I hope that this video gives you a better understanding of the purpose of character arc and how it drives the events of a story. Hello, I hope you liked the video. If you're a screenwriter looking to brainstorm ideas, share and receive feedback, and learn about the writing process with other writers, then you should join the Writer's Room on Facebook. Link is in the description below. Was this video helpful? Let me know in the comments below, and let me know what other elements of screenwriting you'd like me to take a look at. Thanks for watching.